Hello, welcome back to Retro Break. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you might remember that I've visited a few game shops recently called GameSmart, Entertainment World, and Vintage Gamer. I've done full videos on all these, so definitely go and check them out. I'll put links in the description. But basically, I thought I'd got all of the good game shops around here covered on the channel. But it wasn't until I was bored at work the other day that I actually found out about two more game shops here in the Midlands. They are Games Plus and Games Master. So of course I was very excited and I asked my friend Jack if he wanted to go on a bit of a video gaming road trip to go and have a look at them. So join us in this video as we take the journey to check out the other two game shops that I found. Not everything went quite according to plan so enjoy. So before we started the trip we decided to head over to McDonald's and fuel ourselves up for the journey. After that we went to check out CEX in the shopping centre which is actually the shop that I go to every single lunchtime to go and see if they've got any new retro games. This time they didn't really have that much new but there were a few interesting items which I'll point out before we get started. Mr. Do on the SNES is a game that you don't come across very often so I was quite excited to see that. There was also Pokemon Stadium 2 for the N64 which if I didn't already have I would have been very excited to find. And taking a quick look inside as well they had a lot of PS1 games a few Sega Mega Drive games there on the end and some NES and SNES games in the cabinet as well. Let me know if you see anything interesting but definitely keep watching because there's some amazing game shops coming up in this video. Before we left as well we also went to check out the world famous Game Telford. And now to let the road trip begin properly we're on our way to Games Plus. Or at least I hoped we were. The closer we got to the destination, the more this place seemed like it wasn't going to live up to my expectations. I didn't actually manage to get any footage of the street that we drove down, but let's just say that the closer and closer we got, the dodgier and dodgier the street seemed to become. It was also incredibly busy. We tried to pull in at a supermarket and park up, but it turned out that you needed to be a paying customer of the supermarket to park there. So we tried for ages to go up and down the street looking for a parking space, but as you can see here on this street view, that was pretty much impossible. Also, as we drove down the street, we saw the shop and it didn't look anything like it does here on Google. It turns out this photo was actually from 2014, and this is what it looks like these days. Not exactly the most inviting storefront, is it? It also turns out that the shop's about to close down soon, so I don't know whether there'd be that much left in there anyway. Let's try game shop number two instead. Yes. A little bit too Why? busy. What was wrong with Game the first one? A little bit too busy. Too busy. Luckily, the next shop we were going to was actually only about seven minutes away. And as you can see from the front, this one looks a lot more inviting and a lot more promising. So let's go inside and have a look at what they had to offer. Get ready. Unfortunately they didn't have much in the way of retro games but it was a very clean shop at least so it had that going for it. And there was this really interesting thing at the top of the shelf there that looked kind of like a marble and I did actually pick that up and I'll show you after we've looked around the shop. On this side of the shop you can see they had some Switch games, some Wii U games, PS3, there was a few bargain bins dotted around with some Wii and PS3 games but nothing too exciting. And then on the other side of this wall here they had some really cool PSP games for sale. Quite good prices as well considering some of these PSP games were brand new. You can see Breath of Fire 3 there, that's a fantastic game. And the Sonic Rivals games as well which were pretty good. They also had a few PS Vita games that you can see on the other side of the store there. And then around the other side it was all modern things. PlayStation 4, Xbox One, that sort of thing. And they did have a few original Xbox and GameCube games stashed away in the corner, but there wasn't really anything worth showing. 
and I did ask the guy behind the counter if he had any Game Boy games, but he kind of just looked at me as if there was something wrong, so I took that as a no. But I did come away with one interesting thing anyway, so let's take a quick look at that. So before we carry on with the rest of the road trip, I just wanted to come here and show you guys the really weird game that I saw in that store. It was a game called Real Play Puzzle Sphere. I've got the box for it here, I've taken it out of the box, but basically what it is, and this is really strange, I've never seen anything like it before ever, so basically you've got this, if it will focus, you've got this ball here, and it links up to the PlayStation 2 using a USB port on the front, and you, you kind of hold it like that, and you use it like a marble as you're rolling around. The game kind of looks like um, Super Monkey Ball. But I was really, really disappointed because unfortunately it turns out that the USB ports on my PlayStation 2 don't work anymore. So I couldn't get the game to work, so one day I will be able to get it to work. I'm really, really fascinated how good or bad it could possibly be. It's definitely something really interesting though, and it was only $7.99 as well. Never seen anything like it before. If you guys know anything about these Real Play PS2 series games, let me know because I had a look online and I found out there's a few other ones as well. Of course they were trying to copy the Wii, these came out in 2007. So there was things like tennis, golf, bowling, but this one definitely seemed the most interesting because this is the only one that didn't really seem like it was trying to imitate something that Nintendo had done. So it does seem really unique and I'm actually tempted to either try and fix the USB ports on my PlayStation 2 over there or maybe even buy a new one just so I can get this to work. So if I do manage to get it to work in the future, I will definitely make a video here on the channel. Anyway, that's enough about this game. Now let's get back to the road trip. Yes, of course, we ended up back at Vintage Gamer. One of my favorite game shops, not just in the UK, but anywhere. Really is an incredible shop. I'm going to let the footage speak for itself. So before we carry on with the tour of the amazing Vintage Gamer, I just wanted to come here and say yes, I did pick up the N-Gage and I'm absolutely loving it. I really wish I had one of these when it was new. If you want to see my thoughts on the N-Gage and all the other games that I picked up at the shop, have a look in the description after you've finished watching this video because I did an entire pickups episode for games you loved. And that's actually up on their channel right now, so go and check that out after the video. But for now, let's get back to Vintage Gamer. The shelves here with all the PS2 and PS1 games were actually three levels deep. You could easily spend a few hours just looking through these two shelves alone. As you can see there, Jack was pulling out some PSP games from around the back. But there was just so much good stuff here, it really is an incredible shop. You can also see loads of cool stuff in the boxes up the top there as well. I did pick up a few PS1 games from here, so definitely go and have a look at the pickups video on Games You Loved's channel if you want to see what those were. And on this side of the room there were some boxed GBA and Game Boy games. These were also two levels deep, so there's actually another layer of games behind these ones. And now in this cabinet next to the counter there were some really cool rare games there. There's Castlevania 2 on the NES, Wipeout 64, a load of cool Game Boy stuff and DS things, Mega Man Zero 2 there on the Game Boy Advance, uh, some of the Konami collections, they're quite rare and hard to find. Resident Evil 2 on the N64, Mario Party 2, all sorts of really cool stuff in here. And around the corner as well in this cabinet there were some Jaguar games, I really kind of wish I'd picked up Tempest there on the Jaguar. 
And looking a bit further down, here's some Neo Geo Pocket games. They're always really cool to see. And some of the soundtracks from Club Nintendo and some Atari Lynx games as well. I really should have spent more time looking in these cabinets because watching this footage back I can see so many things that I wish I'd picked up while I was there. Now we're going back into the room that we showed at the start of the video and I'll take you around the shelves in a bit more detail. Let me know in the comments if you see anything that stands out to you but I just absolutely love it in here. I could spend all day looking through all these games and you'll see a bit later on as well there's a room at the back that's even more densely packed than this. It's just insane. I found some really cool stuff so definitely check out my pickups episode on games you love like I mentioned earlier. So I'll stop talking now and let you enjoy just how many games are in this room. Look at all this. I'm trying to get a feel for just how cramped it is. There was one game that I forgot to show off in the Games You Loved episode and it's this big box PC game here called Magic Boy. Basically I had this game when I was growing up as a kid and I saw it at the back of the shelf like this. Really nice condition, it's got the CD in there as well. Yes, they wasted a lot of cardboard on a little jewel case CD, but I'm very very excited to give this game a go. I've actually got my old PC down there so hopefully I can get it all set up and give Magic Boy a try. It's literally been over 20 years since I last played this. I'm very much looking forward to seeing if it lives up to any of my memories from a kid. So there we go. Yes, we get to use the
crazy taxi, that's what you're thinking. So thank you all so much for watching, of course we ended up back at Vintage Gamer, what an incredible shop that is. Let me know what you thought of this video down in the comments below, don't forget to comment, subscribe, let me know any other game shops that I might be missing around the Midlands or a bit further afield in the UK in general. If you want to see any of my other game shopping videos, click the playlist on the left. There's a lot to look forward to in there, including this tour of GameSmart that's shown on the screen now as well as complete tours of Vintage Gamer when I went last time and Entertainment World as well. Or if you want to see my pickups video from Games You Loved, click the link on the right of this video. Thank you all so much for watching, I really hope you enjoy these style of videos. I can't wait to visit some more game shops in the future and get a lot more cool footage to share on the channel. I'm also very close to getting 6,000 subscribers which is just insane, so please tell anyone who would be interested about my channel share it around on your social media pages. Just thank you all so much for all your support over the past few years. I've really grown a lot and I can't wait to make some more videos in the future. I've got so many plans. That's it for this episode. Thank you all so much for watching. Goodbye.